Hello and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Okay, this video has actually been a while in the making simply because I read that the Keeper Cup was used in the Biosphere 2 project like months ago, uh, yet I actually found no other confirmation of this. Um, I actually still haven't, however, I'm still going to do this video and uh, you'll see why by the time I get to the end. Uh, let's start with the background. Biosphere uh, 2 is a research facility located in Arizona. It was constructed between 1987 and 1991 by the Space Biosphere Ventures Company. This project had, um, however, this, however, this project had its foundations back from the 1970s when philanthropist Ed Bass and ecologist uh, John P. Allen met at a counterculture community called Synergy Ranch, uh, which Alan ran. Bass provided uh, $150 million in funding until 1991. The Biosphere 2 was intended to show how a closed ecological system could support human life on an exoplanet. Uh, so the reason for this was for, was for space colonisation. It has seven biome or ecological areas rainforest, ocean with coral reef, mangrove wetland, savanna grassland, fog desert, and an agricultural system to support the human habitat. The facility itself is constructed of steel, both in tubing and frames, and has high density glass. It also has lungs, to assist with equalising the pressure due to the expansion and contraction of air due to heating and cooling. Biosphere 2 hosted only two closed missions between September 26, 1991 and September 26, 1993. There were four men and four women of various medical and scientific disciplines um, that went on this mission. However, the experience received a wide array of negative news and suffered various internal problems, such as low oxygen, hunger and fighting that led to the separation of the team into two separate factions. While the agricultural efforts produced 83% of their total diet, uh, by 1992 they had begun eating emergency rations that had not obviously been produced in Biosphere 2. Um, of their diet, they were eating low-calorie, nutrient-dense diets like that came from a dietitian. Um, and they were continually being monitored by a, like a, me a medical team external to this uh, biosphere. Um, the falling oxygen uh, required external teams to intervene and actually boost the oxygen levels. Uh, it fell from, I think I read 30% to about 14%. Um, the 14% would be at like an Everest elevation level. So obviously not, it's survivable by humans, but you get massive fatigue and all of these other type of health effects when you're at an elevation that has that type of low oxygen content. Um, additionally, a team member left the biosphere to get medical treatment and then returned with external materials. These controversies, uh, and they were very controversial at the time, um, and really they, the media at the time particularly considered this experiment to be massively failed. Um, however, these controversies and opinions ignored the fact that this was actually an experiment, and there were always going to be failures, challenges and outcomes that could not always be anticipated along the way. Um, which is kind of the point for this experiment where they could say boost the injection if these um, if this biosphere was say on the moon or on Mars and this um, stuff started happening like oxygen content lowering and stuff like that it would mean uh, death rather than you know the ability to rectify the situation. The second experiment which was from March 6 1994, um, and was anticipated to last 10 months with seven people. Um, while this crew achieved complete food sufficiency by April 1st, uh, 1994, so that's less than a month late, like 
three and a half weeks after they entered, management of this project was uh, evicted, like with federal police, um, while an emergency management team was brought in. By April 4th, 1994, two members of the original crew vandalised the site. Um, two crew members left, um, like exited the compound and left. And by June 1st, 1994, the space at Biosphere's Adventures um, had been dissolved, leaving an interim management team in place that ended, um, that then ended the second mission on September 6th, 1994. Uh, Columbia University assumed management of this facility in December 1995 um, and this lasted until 2003 and um, you know they did quite a few projects with the biosphere obviously but a significant um, part of their uh, results or a significant part of their research um, came was about coral reef research and um, a lot of the information that we have now or currently is from part of their projects during this tenure. Um, in June 2007, um, they saw purchases of the site. Um, June 2007 uh, saw the purchase of the site by the CDO Ranching and Development. Um, and as of June 26, that same year, the Uni of Arizona has managed the Biosphere facility. By So from June 26, 2007, the University of Arizona has managed this facility, which has been used for research. Um, by 2011, Biosphere 2 was donated to the uni outright and is currently being used for research. So it is currently owned by the University of Arizona. Um, as you can see, um, with the 91 to 93 and the 94 experiments, the Keeper Cup or a menstrual cup in general would have been uh, the most viable option or the best option as single-use disposables would not have been viable in a circular closed system. Um, and also, in case you are aware, tampons have a shelf life if they have been there for, I think it's two years, throw them out. Um, while the purpose has evolved um, and it changed, it shows that with an enclosed biosphere, there is no place for single-use disposables. Um, I, will, I hope you enjoyed this bloody tale. Um, I will put some links below for further information and research. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the day. And I, of course, will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.